Now in this lecture, we'll study some basic graphs. So after this chapter, we'll be studying transformation of graphs. So in order to make complicated graphs or smart graphs, we must know the basic graphs. So I'll start with the first graph itself. And the first graph is the graph of a constant function. Say for example, a function is defined as fx equals c. So in this case, I'll just need to draw a line parallel to x-axis at the point y equals c. Say for example, the graph of y equals minus 3 by 2. So I'll draw the axis and then at minus 3 by 2, I will draw straight lines. So this is the graph of a constant function. The second function is identity function. Now identity function is defined as fx is equal to x. So it's a straight line and inclined at an angle of 45 degrees. So this is the graph of y squared x line, which is an identity function. Now the third graph that we'll study is modulus function. Now modulus function is expressed as fx equals mod of x. And we know that mod of x is actually minus x when x is less than zero and then plus x when x is greater than or equal to zero. So if I have to draw this graph, I'll draw the axis. And when x is greater than zero, it is y is equal to x line. And when x is less than zero, it is y is equal to minus x line. So that is the graph of mod x. So it's a V-shaped graph. Now, fourth function is signum function. Now, basically signum function is defined as S G N X. So I'll write F X equals S G N X, or I can express it as mod X upon X when X is unequal to zero. And this is zero when X is equal to zero. So when X is less than zero, what I know is mod X is minus X. So it'll be minus one when X is less than zero, zero at X equals to zero. And when X is greater than zero, mod X is basically plus X. So plus X upon X is one. So if I have to draw this graph, then when x is less than 0, this is minus 1, 0 at x equals to 0. And when x is greater than 0, then so it is plus 1. So that is the graph of signum function. So there may be some questions where they may use signum function in composition with some other function. Signum of fx. So now when I see signum of fx, what I clearly know is wherever fx is less than 0, its value should be minus 1. Where fx is equal to 0, it should be 0. And where fx is greater than 0, then this value should be plus 1. Now say for example, if I'll say find signum function of mod x. So I'll draw the graph of mod x. Now, where mod x is 0, mod x is 0 at 0. So, where fx is 0, signum function is also 0. Now, when x is less than 0 or when x is greater than 0, here, the graph of mod x lies above x-axis. So that means, in this case, it will be positive. So, when fx is positive, then the value of signum function is plus 1. So, that means, I will draw these lines. So, the graph of signum of mod x will be this graph. Let me take another one. So suppose I need to find signum of sin x when x belongs to 0 to 2 pi. So I'll draw the graph of sin x. This is 0, pi, and 2 pi. Now, wherever sin x is 0, it'll take the value 0. Wherever it is positive, it'll take the value plus 1. And wherever this function is negative, it will take the value minus 1. So, the graph which I have drawn with black ink is the graph of signum sine x. Now, the fifth graph that we will study is linear function. Now, basically, linear function is a straight line. Say, for example, fx is defined as ax plus b. Now, how do we draw a line? So, there are two ways. Either I can use y equals to mx plus c, so a is slope and b is intercept, or 
we can always take up two points and then by connecting these two points we can draw a straight line say for example function fx is defined as 2 minus 3x now when x is 0 y is 2 and when y is 0 x is 2 by 3 so if i'll connect these two points i'll get the straight line so this is the graph of fx equals 2 minus 3x so any linear function is nothing but a straight line now the sixth function that we'll study is graph of quadratic expressions so a quadratic expression is given by ax square plus bx plus c now depending on the sign of this a this graph is going to represent a parabola either opening upwards or parabola opening downwards so if a is greater than 0 then it is parabola opening upwards and if a is less than 0 then it is parabola opening downwards now in both the cases this point is called as a vertex of parabola now vertex is given by minus b upon 2a and minus d upon 4a here also it is given by minus b upon 2a and minus d upon 4a another way to find vertex is by differentiating the function so when a is greater than 0 it is parabola opening upwards and when a is less than 0 it is parabola opening downwards so we'll start with the case when a is greater than 0 now suppose when a is greater than 0 so that means it's a parabola opening upwards i'll take three separate cases case 1 when d is greater than 0 case 2 when d is equal to 0 and case 3 when d is less than 0 so if a is greater than 0 it will be parabola opening upwards and d is greater than 0 means it will have two real roots so that means this graph will intersect x axis at two distinct points and these two distinct points will be roots of this equation now when d equals to 0 this graph will just touch the x axis and both the roots they will be equal and this is the point of contact and when d is less than 0 then graph will open upwards but it won't have any real roots so that means in this case this graph will always lie above x axis now in the same way if a is less than 0 then again we have three separate cases d greater than 0 d is equal to 0 and d is less than 0 so opening downwards and two real roots alpha beta opening downwards two equal roots so it touches the x-axis alpha equals beta and then third case where it doesn't have any real roots so then in that case it will always lie below x-axis suppose for example I have to draw the graph of fx equals x square minus 3x and then plus 2 so if i can factorize it i'll factorize it so i'll write x minus 1 x minus 2 now it's a quadratic equation with positive leading coefficient so a is greater than 0 so it'll open upwards now it has two roots x equals to 1 and x equals to 2 so it will intersect x axis at 1 and 2 so vertex will be given by minus b upon 2a and minus d upon 4a so if i have to draw this graph the roots are 1 and 2 the vertex is at 3 by 2 and minus 1 by 4 and if i'll also write value at 0 value at 0 is what value at 0 is 2 so this is the graph of x square minus 3x plus 2 i'll take another one say for example x equals 2x minus x square now in this case a is less than 0 roots are x equals to 0 and x equals to 2 now vertex will be 1 comma 1 so if I have to draw this graph now roots are 0 and 2 now at 1 value is 1 so it is parabola opening downwards so this is the graph of y equals 2x minus x square now what about this one fx is x square minus x plus 1 now in this case 
a is greater than zero but what is the value of d value of d is one minus four which is minus three so d is less than zero so that means it will represent a parabola opening upwards and it will not intersect x-axis so if i have to find its vertex its vertex will be another value of x is one by two and three by four so if i have to draw this parabola so then this is zero i'll take the vertex so this is one by two and this is three by four and what is value at zero value at zero is one So I'll simply draw the parabola like so. This is how we draw graph of quadratic expressions.